Project Greenlight's contest for uh, screenwriting and directing. Amateur people who've never made a movie before get a chance to do just that. We changed the contest this year. There are separate categories of writing and directing. The Battle Shaker Heights is a great coming of age story. And it's about this kid, Kelly, who's pissed off at the hand he's been dealt by life. I had no idea how to get from where I was to being a Hollywood director. I mean, I think it would be pretty intense for them to sort of go from whatever they've been doing to literally coming to work every day and trying to make this movie. People can see how hard it is to do this. We want to show things as they really are. This is the last week of the shoot, and this week we're in the Boland House. The Boland House is the location for all the scenes between Kelly and Bart's family. Everyone is really pulling together to make this work, and they're working long hours, and you can see the strain that it's having on them. I'm just tired. We've been working hard. I've had like eight hours of sleep in the past four days or something, something outrageous. This is the home stretch, and people are tired. They're trying to keep motivated, and we really need to push on through to the end. You know, and the hard thing about shooting is that once we're wrapped, you know, that's it. There's no chance to come back and get it again. It's sort of now or never. Let's roll out. Action. Vermont, remember the Milbeck's place in mm -hmm. uh, Lake Champlain? Yes. So what was that wonderful cheese that we had in those sandwiches in the restaurant? Gouda. Oh, yes, Gouda. Are you sure? Yes, Gouda. Cut. While we were shooting at Bart's house, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez showed up. Ben's been keeping in close touch with the film. He's been watching dailies, but he really wanted to come down and see it for himself. One of the main concerns I had initially on reading about the Shaker Heights was that the waspy, patriarchal family read a little bit too kind of one-dimensional. And I just wanted to come on this day because it is something that I'm a little worried about. I think he's a big presence, and when he comes on the set, everyone knows it. Things definitely changed today. There was a flurry of cameras and sort of focus. It's a pleasure. How are you? Is guys treating you all right? Uh, they're treating us very well. I hope so. Fucking Ben Affleck and Jay are in there shooting the shit like, like it's in another day. <laughs> so how's this going? Uh, I think it's going really well. Shooting the, the dinner scene. Paying so, any attention yeah. to it or just? No. <laughs> Jeff and Chris are obviously around to take care of whatever logistical issues may come up. So far, it looks great, and they're doing a good job. Get Shia LaBeouf. That's brilliant. It's doing great, right? It's brilliant. brilliant. I'm just going to call myself LaBeouf, too. That's a stage name. I think you should. He took my name. Ben LaBeouf. <laughs> oh, how's it going? Are you getting along with the director? No. No, okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> It's great. Okay. It's been great. I just, yeah, tell them what to do. And that's good. You should just be directing from the side. Basically, that's kind of what that's I. That's the way it'll work best. The best, yeah. And this is Kelly. Hey. What's up, man? How you doing, buddy? Where you been? It's I a see pleasure. your name on the call sheets. You're never around. Shia has this really interesting quality to him. Have you done? You haven't done the love scene yet? The thing out there. No, that's Soon. coming out uh, Monday. Very exciting. Oh, it's Wink, so exciting. Wink, hope, hope. Yeah, yeah. Should be, you may get lucky. He is in the movie, he's the crux of the movie, he carries it. You have to want to watch him, you have to care about how these circumstances are affecting him. Hey, thanks by the way for, uh, I know it was a pain in the ass for the whole thing and then wanting you to promote the other movie. I'm glad that worked out, I appreciate it. I think that was the right thing for you, I'm glad you did it. Yeah, I'm glad I did it too. You're great in this fucking thing. Thank you, man. Really, really good. I think it was critical that we get him, I was really thrilled that we did. I think he's doing a great job. Let's still check him. Action. Tabby, honey, have you finished the seating arrangements? Mom, can we please just talk about something else for once? Well, darling, we have to take the list to the calligrapher. I think the only role, really, that on the page was still in danger of veering into stereotype was the mother. We already talked about that. We thought when we go in for her shots that we'd mention that. You're not listening, you're not aware that he just shut We down. just gave Dana some notes to try to bring the waspiness bit of her performance down a little bit into a more subtle area, which she did. I just think that flowers are so sensual. Central? Unfortunately, I, as I watched the actress play the part, she seemed to bring it to life in a way that was ameliorating a lot of the concerns that I had about it. So, Mrs. Boland, what are you doing later? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a very fine line between character and caricature. Fortunately, we have really smart, really good actors. So, I think we got it. Yeah. yeah. This has got to be exciting for you, huh? Are you kidding? It's Great, totally huh? awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's like ridiculous. I mean. You know, 
I remember when Ben was reading all the scripts and he was like, there's the script I read today because I was working at the time and he was home every day. He was like, the script I read to Bash. She's like, I think it's going to be the one. I said, really? Jennifer and I talked about kind of, you know, a lot of different things. This experience is that, like, where on one hand you're like, okay, like, my wildest dream has come true, and now it's happening. Like, I get it's to do what I want to do. It's always the beginning. Exactly, and then you're like, oh, but I'm totally the same, and I'm still screwed up. How old are you? 28. That's the, this is, that's the confusing time. Nobody tells you that. 28, 29, 30. It's like when you start calling your mom, you're like, Ma! <laughs> what is going on? She was completely charming. She really was. It was really nice talking to you. It was good fucking you. Yeah. Good luck. I can't I'll wait see to see it. Thanks for stopping. Good stuff. We'll see. If I come back, it's a fucking problem. <laughs> <laughs> so far from what I'm seeing, I'm really excited and encouraged, and I think we got a shot at having a really, really exceptional movie this year. Gold, color of the sun. In Tabby's art studio, there was a line that Kelly had, gold is the color of the sun. And it seemed to me that Kelly was just looking for anything to say to impress Tabby. Kyle thought it should be more of a, an honest sentiment from Kelly. When he did it that way, I really liked it. That one line was, I thought, an opportunity to show a little more of a softer side. We also have the writer here who could tell us exactly what she had yeah. in mind with, sure. with that line. So. After the day in the Arboretum where we had made changes without checking with Erica at first, I think uh, we realized that that was, a, that was a you know bad move on our part. So we've definitely been trying hard to make sure that she's involved. The one line, gold is the color of the sun. Yeah. How, when you wrote that, what was your intention there? Complete. Yes. That's what I thought. Is that what you were thinking as That's well? That's what I was thinking. Okay. Kyle had a different thought about it, so. Yeah. He's just pulling out the first thing he could think of. Wow. Huh. It's gold. It's the color of the sun. It's the waterfront. The waterfront? And cut. Cut. Yeah, it's good. Very good. Okay, I okay. just want to make sure we get it down. Okay. But I thought, I just wanted to just say that the last one was really going in a good direction, I thought. It's I going in a good direction, but it still needs... Yeah, to sure, sure. Down. But I, I thought um, it looked good. Erica was giving notes about the scene, and the problem that we both had with that was that Shia was standing right there. I guess that this is the, the lesson is never to come and give my opinion, because the one time I do say that something's okay. That's all, you know, I mean, pull us aside or wait until... We have a moment where we're not right there dealing with them. I wonder sometimes how much control I actually have over the role that I've created for myself and whether I achieve the right balance between, like, kind of saying my piece at certain times and not sticking my nose in all over the place. They took me aside and gave me a stern talking to. Did they? <laughs> Ever saying anything is usually just a bad idea. The scenes between Kelly and Bart's family are some of the most comedic scenes in the movie. Hopefully that plays right into Kyle and Ephraim's strengths, so we're really counting on them to step up. That is gorgeous. One of my favorite scenes in the movie is Harrison, Bart's dad, is showing Bart and Kelly his collection of nesting dolls. It kind of just sets up that Bart's dad is really more interested in collecting than he is in knowing or understanding his own children. And action. The origin of nesting dolls is shrouded in mystery. Some say the oldest are from China. Still others say Japan. I don't have any of those, but the ones I do have are from Russia. And the Russians perfected the art of nesting dolls. Ray is someone who we approached on a whim a few years ago, and he's, he's been in a couple of our pieces always for free. We think the world of him, and he seems to really enjoy working with us and hanging out with us. I think that Kyle and Ephraim are having a, a lot of fun shooting this film. They're, they're pretty well schooled in guerrilla filmmaking, so just about anything goes with those two guys. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Let's stand by. And action. All the way to the little bitty one, the baby, Ruby. Little Ruby baby. My baby Ruby is, whoa, good God. I think just in general that Ephraim and I love comedy. Probably there's more drama in Shaker Heights than 
than we would gravitate towards. But I think the moments of comedy are going to be very kind of fresh and funny, hopefully. Cut! Cut. That was the one. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. We were about to move on from the scene, but we decided to get one extra shot of Ray getting under the piano. Well, can, can we just do this? Can we just get this out of here and shoot, shoot him going under the table? We hadn't gotten, you know, a good, strong version of his line for the audio, so I mentioned it to Sterling, the boom operator. I know this is a difficult one, but if we can get a good ruby, we're not going to have to worry about it, but we have it yet. Mm -hmm. Gotten everything. Oh, great. All right. Things with Sterling kind of came to a head very suddenly, and I felt like I got a response back that was kind of snippy and had a really bad attitude, and I was like, whoa, what is that? You just have to understand, I've been doing this for 10 years. I've done over 40 features. I will nail my dialogue every single time. I do not need to be told where to put my mic ever, ever. And it's like I've been told so many times. But you did. Please l let me finish. Yeah, yeah. Um, we were ready to move on after Oh, yeah, the I know that. Yeah, we were ready, too. We were already came one out. <laughs> right. But Tom wanted to add a shot. Yeah. So. Oh, it was cool. We can nail it. Please let me finish. We hadn't gotten the line at that point, um, to my satisfaction. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So since we had the opportunity now to get in closer, oh, I just absolutely. wanted to make that comment to you. Because we were moving on, we hadn't gotten the line. You hadn't come I, up to okay, me and I said, do, we need I to get a wild line. What you're saying. I'm not finished yet. You hadn't come up to me and said, we need to get a wild line of Ray saying that line. Yeah. So that's why I mentioned it to you. Okay. Because I did not have you already talking to me about it. No, and now if I can have a chance to explain to you just for a brief moment. Uh, we hadn't shot him actually seeing him say that line, and it sounded perspective for him being underneath the piano. Um, we make determinations of what we need and what we need to get, and, and we let you know about them all day, every day, so far on this show. All, Are you ready for blocking me? Yeah, I need to go I'm, move on. To all I'm taking place. issue with is the attitude that you threw at me when I mentioned that to you. I walked away from that situation feeling just angry. I just didn't want to have that kind of energy floating around the film set. It's, it's hard enough and stressful enough as it is without someone throwing attitude around. I've done over 40 features. I know. And he's telling me where to put a microphone. I know where you can put a microphone. <laughs> we have decided that we don't want Sterling on our team anymore. It's not like I take any joy out of firing someone. If your attitude is clashing with what we're trying to do here, and we need you to leave. I'm just like, why the fuck am I having these conversations with someone on set? This is just, it's, it, why is someone with that kind of attitude on our set? My take is, is that we're a technical crew and we seem to know what we're doing. We're just doing our job. Never did I intend to suggest that you guys don't know your jobs. Mm -hmm. What I take issue with are the sarcastic or, you know, assy comments that I'm getting from him on set. I mean, I think Sterling's doing a great job. I think technically the sound is really good. I think, right. you know, he's, he's, he's good at what he does. You know, talk to Sterling and say, look, this is what it is, you know, and try to patch it up. What he's upset about is when you answer him in that sarcastic tone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you, you got to stop that. you got to dress it up a little bit, unfortunately. I'd say you got we got eight days left. Have a little bit of diplomacy. Ephraim, we don't want to lose somebody that's doing a good job if all it means is being a little nicer. I just, I wanted you to know that uh, you know, I never intended to question either of your abilities to do your job. I, I do realize you guys have don't haven't done a lot of a lot of films, and and don't really know completely what the other departments are doing or are capable of doing. But we will not let you down. It's it's my goal to get you great sound. Yeah, and I, I never once have had the uh, worry that you guys were going to let us down ever. Okay. Now that I've calmed down a little bit. I am glad that we managed to work it out because I think it'll be better for everyone. I really do. The movie really hinges on these scenes between Tabby and Kelly. Their relationship has been very difficult from the script stage. The limo scene was really hard to figure out. And now we're here doing the big love scene. It's the scene where Tabby's talking about how Minor broke up with her. And it's the first time Kelly's ever felt emotional for someone else, because he's a selfish-ass kid. I'm gonna be doing some of that, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna watch, I got a little notepad, I'm gonna take notes. Watch. Yeah. The last on-screen kiss I have, I was 13, she was 13. Amy Smart's in her 20s, and I'm 16. I feel a little embarrassed, because I have to kiss a 16-year-old. He's adorable and cute, and I'm sure he has to get a signature from his mom, some waiver, you know. So it's not illegal. I think the key to this scene, too, where Kelly's coming from, is that 
it's a, it genuinely hurts him to see her in pain. Oh, I know. He wants this, but he's, it's also, it's a very anxiety-laden moment. Kyle and Ephraim always do this. They'll tell you exactly what you need to know, and, know, and then they'll tell you everything surrounding what you, what you need to know, which is good, because it gives me an opportunity to extend myself in certain areas and kind of save myself for certain things. We decided to hold off on the kiss for as long as possible and really save that for the end of the day. We're not doing a full out Mackie roll. Hell yeah, we are. Are we? <laughs> <laughs> Amy is fly as hell. I'll really let her know what's going on after this movie wraps. But uh, I heard she's got like some hockey boyfriend or something. I ain't trying to mess with that. I'm Jewish, you know what I mean? I'm not a fighter but I'll get in them panties. You know what I mean? <laughs> My fear was that when you have somebody as, you know, attractive and together and 26 and a grad student at Yale, played by Amy Smart, and then you got a 16-year-old kid trying to somehow end up having sex with her, that's gotta be believable. Yeah, I can sell it. Yeah, she totally can. I know. I, mean, I think it's like the right balance of confidence and vulnerability, and you can totally see it happening. When those kind of scenes are good, you know, and I think a lot of girls, that's why you go to the movies, because you feel like, you know, that's the way that you'd like it to be. Now, whether you'd like it to be a 16-year-old boy is kind of like another question. Did you get some gum? I had some. Have another piece, because you had fucking salsa and beans. Really clean that mouth out with some nice gum. OK, here we go. Let's stand by, please, and settle. Marker. Actions. I'm not as complicated as you think. Well, I didn't say you were complicated. Maybe you just wasn't the right one, you know? Yeah, but it wasn't more than that. You like me, don't you? Of course. <laughs> no, I mean, you like me. I think you're amazing. I'll do something. Cut! And from the top, let's go again. Do something. I think the director sort of wanted to hold off on the kiss just until the last minute so it would be shiny and beautiful and, and magical on screen. Ephraim and Kyle are just uncomfortable. Oh. <laughs> Your batteries. They're not going to let it get that far. Do something. Cut. Go on again. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure that when we do get to the kiss, please do not applaud. <laughs> and action. I'll do something. peanut gallery, particularly Shayna, Shai's mom, and Erica, who'd obviously written the script, it was very moving and, and eventful for them because it came off well. It was what Erica envisioned, and I think for Shayna, she was very proud of her son, and it was a very sweet, lovely moment. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap. Oh, I definitely was not sure um, about the on-screen chemistry between Amy and Triad, so it was really gratifying to see that it was there. Even though he's 16 years old, he's so beyond his years, and I was really impressed with the amount of vulnerability and accessibility he has as an actor. Every take, they did a really, really nice job, and Chris Moore came in, he's like, I, I just think you should know outside, because we were in a garage, he's like, outside, everyone that's uh, standing around the monitor, pretty happy, and we've got a few people who are crying. <laughs> Yeah, look at her dumbstruck. See, that's what I do to the ladies. They come out looking like that after me. 
She knows. You know how I do it, Amy. Yeah. <laughs> Day 22 of 22, and by a miraculous uh, act of God, we are where we're supposed to be, at the supermarket location in Sierra Madre. We're going to be shooting all night long. We start tonight at 5 o'clock, and we're going to be ending tomorrow at 6 in the morning. They it won an internet a contest. Didn't anyone realize that? <laughs> we're not doing a good job. We won a fucking internet contest. Uh, the good news is, is one day to go. The bad news is, is one day to go. The challenges are that, you know, we have a day and a half's worth of work. It's gonna be a race to the finish line. So what dialogue do they change? Where's Erica? Have you seen her? Hey, Shy. Yeah, boss. Did Erica or Colin Effort yeah. talk to you about how to change the dialogue? What answer do you want to hear, brother? I'll give it to you. <laughs> I like the truth, dude. Well, the, the truth is, uh, yes, they did no, change they didn't talk to me at all. Apparently, you've changed it so that he's not, she's not getting on it anymore. Yeah. So a lot of this dialogue doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. Shy is unaware of that. I know, we're just, we, uh, we're, we're on our way to the, with to the Erica. makeup trailer to go we and talk to them, them, and Erica had a potential line change, she was thrown by us, so. It's not gonna change in a massive way? No. Even though there's six lines that don't make sense? Yes. How does that work out? I was hoping that by now they would learn how to communicate with people, but I guess not. All right, so we're waiting on you guys. Okay. Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> Jesus, you are freaking us out. Happening. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. I don't on. know. We're, everyone's standing around. I know. This is the way it's been. This is our process. <laughs> Everyone stands around. Eventually, we shoot, and then we scream about how late it is. <laughs> we cut a bunch of shots, and we call it a day. <laughs> that, that, that would be what it is. Action. The scenes in the grocery store were mainly between Kelly and Sarah. And the only time we could be in there was from after they closed to when they open in the morning. Boom. Germs have the high ground. They're shelling your position heavily. You're you holed up in a stone is. barn, running low on ammo. The cries of one wounded men fill the air like cries of hungry babies. There's a long segment of dialogue that uh, Shia had to recite while throwing cans at Shiri. The Germans have the high ground. They're shelling your position heavily. You're holed up in a stone barn. Cries of hungry men fill the air like cries of wounded babies. Wounded babies. Fuck me. Ha! Ah. Get it all the way through. Tough, I know, I know it's tough. That's why I want, I want to keep you focused. My mind focused. When you have dialogue like that, which is a lot, and the wording is very specific, and then you've got a really specific action, it has the potential of feeling very overwhelming. The Germans have high ground. They're shelling your position heavily. You're stashed in a bunker in the forest. You're holed up in a stone barn. Okay. When I'm tired like this, it, it does, definitely does affect a lot of things. Roll sound. Action. Your commanding officer gets shot in the head, dies. At 1 p.m., you lose radio contact with the... If you withdraw, the German forces will... Fuck. If you withdraw, the German forces... If you withdraw... Fuck. One more time. Don't be stressed. I mean, this is... You've done far harder things than this. You're William James Rowley of the 101st Airborne. It was late. He was really tired. It had been a long shoot. I feel you're never closer to life. What the hive? More alive. You're William James Rowley of the 101st Airborne pin, pin fucking the horses. <sighs> you're William James Rowley of the 101st Airborne pinned down in Noville. Fucking horses all over me, and they're running. Let's just take some time. The stress, I think, was just getting to him. I felt that we should give Shy a little bit of time to, to, to sit with the lines and relax because he was getting so worked up. Go right to the end of the scene, just get the end of the scene. And live with the fact that you're gonna cut over to her getting shelled. Chris Moore's concern was that we were spending too much time on the scene. I totally disagreed because we were set up to do the scene, and why not wait until we get the thing? My suggestion was to break up the dialogue, have them just do a couple pieces of it. I mean, it's an easy scene to cut away because you have Shiri reacting to the can, so he doesn't have to deliver it all together. The light's not the light. You need to learn about Josh. I don't know if you understand. Let him go and handle it. Germans have the high positions, You're shelling your position heavily. You're just uh, fuck, 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 fuck. One more time. If you withdraw, the German forces will flank the entire Allied forces along the Bastogne fires. 
One of the reasons we've made it this far is that Shia always nails his lines. But you know, at this point, Colin Ephraim really just need to face the fact that, that Shia may not make it this time. It's the last night of shooting, and we're out of second chances. That's so what you're saying, do that okay. now, and then do the monologue after lunch? No, I'm saying the monologue's over. We've tried it enough times. I'm saying get the end of the scene before lunch, and let's move on. I, I guess I don't fully understand that, but yeah, we should give him one more try. Okay. If you withdraw the German allies, this is gonna fucking kill me, dude. I can't, I can't right now. Yeah. Cut, cut. Cut. All right, I think we're All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's lunch. When we broke for lunch with Shayna, Shia's mom explained to me that she was worried about him because Shia wasn't eating and that he was obsessing on trying to trying to get the words straight for that little speech. He wants to nail it. Mm -hmm. I'll go bring him food and I'll talk to him. They just made up a plate of food. I found him just kind of wandering the street. I want you to eat something. No, I'm good. No. I'm good. Hey. No. You're William James Riley of the 101st Airborne. Listen to me. Down to Nova. What? I have to get this, asshole. No, you don't. You're getting hung up on the memorization? No, I'm, trust me. Trust me. I'm going to take it slow because I was taking it too fast. I was rushing through it to get it, and that's not working. So I have to do this. Not for you, not for the shot, not for anybody. It's for me. OK. It'll make me feel better if I get it, and it'll make my day better. It'll make my last day like a fucking prom, you know? Action. You're William James Rowley of the 101st Airborne. You're pinned down in Noville. The Germans have the high ground. They're shelling your position heavily. You're holed up in a stone barn, running low on ammo. The cries of wounded men fill the air like cries of hungry babies. Kelly! Next, your commanding officer gets shot in the face and dies. At 1 p.m., you lose radio contact with headquarters. If you withdraw, the German forces will flank all the Allied forces along the Bastogne to break the front. What do you do? What do you do? Kelly, stop it! Battle of the Bulge, southern shoulder, December 44. Cut. Move it on. When he came back, he nailed it, and we moved on. And you know, I was glad that we had taken the time to get the scene right. It was a really long night at the market. You know, it's our last day of shooting. We had a ton of stuff that we had to get. Action. I think working here is very depressing. Only quick. Unfortunately, we had a few more insert shots we had to get done, so we were really panicked and sort of rushing before we got kicked out of the location. Thank God they were inserts, because if it had been any dialogue, I'd have been speaking Bulgarian. We're rolling. Action. Rapping Shia was huge and was emotional too. I definitely felt like we had been through a, through quite a journey together, and that Shia had really brought Kelly to life. Just got such a great career ahead of him. The overriding feeling I have is that I basically feel so lucky that I've been given the opportunity to do this. I'm glad that we finished the shoot and we got everything and I feel good about that, but I'm also, I'm just sad to see it all kind of come to an end. Although this production was much briefer in time than most, I think we got a lot done and I'm really proud of what everyone accomplished. I think we made a pretty good movie, I really did. I think it went really, really well. Yeah, unfortunately, in movie making, just because it went well doesn't mean the movie's any good. to bring it to life in a way that was ameliorating a lot of the concerns that I had about it.
So, Mrs. Boland, what are you doing later? <laughs> It's just a very fine line between character and caricature. Fortunately, we have really smart, really good actors. So, I, think I think we got that angle. Yeah. We can move yeah. on, yeah. This has got to be exciting for you, huh? Are you kidding? It's Great, totally huh? awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's like ridiculous. I mean, you know, I remember when Ben was reading all the scripts and he was like, there's the script I read today, because I was working at the time and he was home every day. She's like, I think it's gonna be the one. I said, really? Jennifer and I talked about kind of, you know, a lot of different things. This experience is that, like, where on one hand you're like, okay, like, well, my wildest dream has come true, and now it's happening. Like, I get it's to do what I want to. It's always the beginning. Exactly, and then you're like, oh, but I'm totally the same, and I'm still screwed up. How old are you? 28. That's the, this is, that's the confusing time. Nobody tells you that. 28, 29, 30. It's like when you start calling your mom, you're like, Mom, what is going on? She was completely charming. She really was. It was really nice talking to you. It was good fucking you. Yeah. Good luck. I can't I'll wait see to see it. Thanks for that. Good stuff. We'll see. If I come back, it's a fucking problem. Come on, remember the Milbeck's place in uh, Lake Champlain? Yes. So what was that wonderful cheese that we had in those sandwiches in the restaurant? Gouda. Oh, yes, Gouda. Are you sure? Yes, Gouda. Cut. While we were shooting at Bart's house, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez showed up. Ben's been keeping in close touch with the film. He's been watching dailies, but he really wanted to come down and see it for himself. One of the main concerns I had initially on reading the Battle of Shaker Heights was that the waspy, patriarchal family read a little bit too kind of one-dimensional. And I just wanted to come on this day because it is something that I'm a little worried about. I think he's a big presence, and when he comes on the set, everyone knows it. Things definitely changed today. There was a flurry of cameras and sort of focus. It's a pleasure. How are you? Is guys treating you all right? Uh, they're treating us very well. I hope so. Fucking Ben Affleck and Jayla are in there shooting the shit like, like it's in another day. <laughs> oh, how's this going? Uh, I think it's going really well. Shooting the, the dinner scene. Paying so, any attention yeah. to it or just... No. <laughs> Jeff and Chris are obviously around to take care of whatever logistical issues may come up. So far, it looks great, and they're doing a good job. Get Shia LaBeouf. That's brilliant. It's done great, right? That's brilliant. Great. I'm just going to call myself LaBeouf, too. That's a stage name. I think you should. He took my name. Ben LaBeouf. <laughs> oh, how's it going? Are you getting along with the director? No. No, okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so far from what I'm seeing, I'm really excited and encouraged, and I think we got a shot at having a really, really exceptional movie this year. Action. Gold. Color of the sun. In Tabby's art studio, there was a line that Kelly had, gold is the color of the sun. And it seemed to me that Kelly was just looking for anything to say to impress Tabby. Kyle thought it should be more of a, an honest sentiment from Kelly. When he did it that way, I really liked it. That one line was, I thought, an opportunity to show a little more of his softer side. We also have the writer here who could tell us exactly what she had yeah. in mind with, sure. with that line. After that day in the Arboretum where we had made changes without checking with Erica at first, I think uh, we realized that that was a that was a you know bad move on our part. So we've definitely been trying hard to make sure that she's involved. The one line gold is the color of the sun. Yeah. How, when you wrote that, what was your intention there? Complete BS. That's what I thought. Is that what you were thinking? As That's well? what I was thinking. Okay. Kyle had a different thought about it. So. Yeah. He's just pulling out the first thing you could think of. Wow. Hmm. It's gold. It's the color of the sun. It's the waterfront. The waterfront? And cut. Cut. Yeah, Very good. Project Greenlight's a contest for uh, screenwriting and directing. Amateur people who've never made a movie before get a chance to do just that. 
We changed the contest this year. There are separate categories of writing and directing. The Battle Shaker Heights is a great coming of age story. And it's about this kid, Kelly, who's pissed off at the hand he's been dealt by life. Because I had no idea how to get from where I was to being a Hollywood director. I mean, I think it would be pretty intense for them to sort of go from whatever they've been doing to literally coming to work every day and trying to make this movie. People can see how hard it is to do this. We want to show things as they really are. This is the last week of the shoot, and this week we're in the Boland House. The Boland House is the location for all the scenes between Kelly and Bart's family. Everyone is really pulling together to make this work, and they're working long hours, and you can see the strain that it's having on them. I'm just tired. We've been working hard. I've had like eight hours of sleep in the past four days or something, something outrageous. This is the home stretch, and people are tired. They're trying to keep motivated, and we really need to push on through to the end. You know, and the hard thing about shooting is that once we're wrapped, you know, that's it. There's no chance to come back and get it again. It's sort of now or never. Let's roll sound. Action. That's great. Okay. It's been great. I just, I yeah, tell them what to do and direct. That's good. You should just be directing from the side. Basically, that's kind of what that's I That's the way it'll work best. the best, yeah. And this is Kelly. Hey. What's up, man? How you doing, buddy? Where you been? It's I a see pleasure. your name on the call sheets. You're never around. Shia has this really interesting quality to him. Have you done? You haven't done the love scene yet? The thing out there? No, that's Soon. coming out uh, Monday. Very exciting. Oh, it's Wait, so hope, exciting. Hope. Yeah, yeah. Should be. You may get lucky. He is in the movie. He's the crux of the movie. He carries it. You have to want to watch him. You have to care about how these circumstances are affecting him. Hey, hey thanks, by the way, for. Uh, I know it was a pain in the ass for the whole thing, and then wanting you to promote the other movie. I'm glad that worked out. It'll I appreciate work. it. I think that was the right thing for you. I'm glad you did it. Yeah, I'm glad I did it too. You're great in this fucking thing. Thank you, man. Really, really good. I think it was critical that we get him. I was really thrilled that we did. I think he's doing a great job. Let's still check him. Action. Tabby, honey, have you finished the seating arrangements? Mom, can we please just talk about something else for once? Well, darling, we have to take the list to the calligrapher. I think the only role, really, that on the page was still in danger of veering into stereotype was the mother. We already talked about that, and we thought when we go in for her shots that we'd mention that. You're not listening, you're not aware that he just shut We down. just gave Dana some notes to try to bring the waspiness bit of her performance down a little bit into a more subtle area, which she did. I just think that flowers are so sensual. Unfortunately, as I watched the actress play the part, she seemed